Greetings, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. I am here with Talia Fox, who is our sustainability court. Uh, I was about to say coordinator. So our sustainability manager here uh, in town. And Talia has been on the job for three whopping months so far. <laughs> um, and we are here to both introduce Talia to the community, as we like to do here on Talk of the Town, uh, and also get a sense of the gigantic <laughs> Uh, job that she has taken on here. So first of all, welcome to ACMI studio and to Talk of the Town. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we really appreciate you taking the time to do so. Um, and I mentioned, or almost garbled, your job title, um, which is Sustainability Manager. And that's different from Ken Pruitt's job. Uh, you theoretically, you know, came in um, uh, to replace, so to speak, Ken, but he was the energy manager. So that seems like uh, a significant change. And can you just explain what, what's going on there? Sure. So um, nobody can replace Ken. <laughs> um, he was the energy manager um, and was, I, I basically am doing a similar job. Um, but the change in title, I think, is reflective of uh, a more holistic view of of climate mitigation work, which is my focus. So in the climate world, we refer to uh, mitigation and adaptation, perhaps sort of a false dichotomy, but mm -hmm. mitigation referring to greenhouse gas uh, emissions reduction, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, pollutants that cause climate change, and adaptation or resiliency referring to um, adapting to the changes we can already expect to see and that we um, you know will increase. Um, and so I'm focused on the mitigation side of things. And that was also Ken's role. Um, he was working on building efficiency and, as am I, um, clean energy and electric vehicle and electric vehicle charging stations. Um, and all of that work I am still doing in addition to uh, implementing our net zero action plan, mm -hmm. which has a goal of getting the town to uh, net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Um, and that is a, a a visionary commitment. It, it aligns with our state's goals as well. And so it's my job to do everything that Ken was doing and also um, uh, implement that plan. Exactly. So, as <laughs> I referred to, to gigantic um, <laughs> sure. is your portfolio. And we will dig into that um, for sure um, with the balance of, what, of, of our conversation today. But I always would like to start, or we like to start here and talk of the town when we're speaking to somebody who's recently come into a position in town just about how you got here. And, um, and I understand from uh, you know, a little bit of what we were talking about before we went on air, uh, that it wasn't a direct route, that you didn't you know, either come out of the womb or you know, <laughs> discover as a, you know, at Greta Thunberg's age or something that, oh, this is, this is my calling. Tell us. Yeah, and I, I love talking to people about my path because I don't, um, you know, I think it, when, when I look back now, it, it makes a lot of sense to me, but maybe at the time as I was going through school, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and I was trying to figure it out and, and I, I've always had a, a number of interests. Um, and so I guess for me, my interest in environment has always been about people and about communities and understanding how people create home and create a sense of identity and a sense of purpose in collaboration with community. And I think mm. that comes from just growing up in a very strong community um, where, where I grew up in a, in a big family. And so uh, that, that sense of, of awareness, of conscientiousness, of, of the impact of my actions on others and you know, both positive and negative mm -hmm. um, was really instilled in me, I think, um, from, a, from a young age. And so um, I'm always thinking about that in my work. I, I, I wouldn't say that I came about environmental work because I cared about polar bears or about um, <laughs> you know, trees. I mean, I obviously care about those things because it's all connected mm -hmm. to, to humans and, and how we thrive. But um, I think I come at it more from a sense of, of justice and, and, as I was saying, how, how we all create meaning um, and, and safety and um, have healthy, healthy, thriving lives. So when I got to college, I was, I was looking for a sense of place and, and like-minded individuals, and those individuals were the ones in the climate um, and mm -hmm. the environmental club. Mm -hmm. And so I gravitated toward that group, and I, and I was, uh, you know, my eyes were really opened at that moment to, to all of the things I had to learn about environmental policy and environmental justice. And so I got involved in, um, you know, gardening and um, weatherization and building efficiency mm -hmm. on campus. 
Um, and I, I actually at the time was majoring in linguistics, um, and so not exactly environmental studies or, or environmental science, but I ended up minoring in environmental science and public policy after discovering this environmental club mm -hmm. because I, I wanted to pursue that route. Um, and I actually saw it as being very connected to the work that I was doing um, understanding the sociology and psychology right. of language, and I've always loved languages and, and communication, and um, and I was also doing sort of arts management work and, and theater and dance at the time too. So uh, again, just this this idea of, of how do we how do we make meaning and communicate and, and talk about things that are important to us, and I see art and environment as doing that as well. So um, I, after college, I pursued the environmental policy path. I ended up um, living in Brazil for a year, studying conservation policy in Portuguese and Samba in, in the Brazilian wow. Amazon. Wow. Um, and that was a really incredible experience. And then I worked uh, for a couple of years in Washington, D.C. for an environmental nonprofit called the Environmental Law Institute, mm -hmm. which does a lot of international and um, environmental law research. Um, and so that was a really wonderful experience, getting to understand the environmental nonprofit scene in D.C. Um, and at that time, I was also, you know, wanting to ground my environmental work more in issues of social justice and racial justice, and I, I found planning school, city planning, and so I ended up getting a master's in city planning, coming back to Massachusetts for that degree, um, and uh, have have stayed since. Um, and have been working, you know, before coming to Arlington, was working in um, environmental consulting with uh, a couple different firms, but but working primarily with municipalities and county governments and, and other public entities to uh, develop climate action plans, develop net zero action plans, mm -hmm. uh, do climate vulnerability assessments, um, track sustainability metrics, and facilitate those, those planning and tracking processes. So that was where I was sort of immediately prior to Arlington. And I think I, think I always knew I wanted to be in the public sector. Mm -hmm. um, I've. I, I, I sort of, as you heard from my intro uh, spiel of sorts, I, I, I care a lot about um, about helping the public and, and being a member of the public um, and, and the idea of a, kind of the public good. And so I, I've wanted to, to you know, come to, to public sector. And, and I live down the street in Somerville, so when this job became available, you know, I knew I wanted to work close to home on, on these issues and, and really see how to implement some of the things that I was planning. Um, I had been developing all these climate action plans, so I wanted to see how it played right. out. Right. I yeah. mean, it, that that path, uh, you know, as, as you you know mentioned again before we went on air, it kind of in retrospect, it it all kind of makes sense yeah. how <laughs> how that path ca ca kind of came together. But even as you just described it, uh, it seems like a, a very kind of organic moving from step to step as you just described. Um, and we're, uh, I can see why you would have been, uh, with that background, why you would have, you know, right away just gotten uh, people's attention here in Arlington uh, for this position. Because it does seem like, um, again, you bring, uh, for, for the years that you've been working, a lot of that just kind of is directly pertinent to what you've now taken on um, and kind of preparing you for that. I also love what you said. Um, you know, uh, uh, right at the beginning of what you were talking about, about your origin, you, you know, your roots being as part of a big family and just thinking about, yeah, you know, I mean, you that can either make you perhaps super competitive as a person, you know, whatever, what the dynamic of the dinner table and getting, you know, or it can make you aware right from, you know, from, from, from the get-go of just, yes, Everything you do is impacting other people around you, mm -hmm. and you are both impacted by and, and impacting them. And so you're already part of this, what a large family is like a little community unto itself, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I just love that, that idea. Um, so uh, we need to start to talk about what you're <laughs> actually uh, doing. Um, but, um, you know, I do, I do want to say that it's, it's um, kind of s something that's very visible to folks here in Arlington um, is uh, the kind of our status as a community, um, as a, a kind of model green community mm -hmm. within the state and in, within the region. I think we take great pride in that. I think that that does reflect the values that are in the community. Um, 
And so people pay attention to and celebrate the various distinctions that, you know, that, that we've been able to um, share uh, with the audience over the, over the years, talking to you, talking to Adam Chapdelaine, talking to Jenny Raitt, talking to, you know, all kinds of officials, Ken Pruitt, who are responsible for our, you know, our, our current, where, where we are at the moment. And the Net Zero Action Plan was a big splash um, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, the announcement of it and the kind of the, the commitment to it. It's your job, <laughs> however, um, uh, it, almost exclusively to make this happen. And um, I want to start there and then start to talk about some of the, I've got a long list here of the, th the things that you're involved in. And we'll probably get to some or most of it. Um, but it's all grounded in, in net zero. Um, so remind us what it is and what you, you know, start to explain to us some of the steps that are going to be, need to be taken to get there. Yeah. So first, I just want to echo what you were saying about all the folks who have laid the groundwork for this. I mean, Adam and Jenny um, and Ken and others. Um, and and their, their work has really made my job a whole lot easier. But our net zero action plan has a goal of getting us to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. And the idea of net zero is we have to reduce our emissions as much as we possibly can, and that's through a combination of, of doing less, so energy efficiency and also fuel switching, so switching from fossil fuel powered vehicles and systems in our homes to clean electricity. So reducing it first, switching, and then offsetting if we have to uh, use any remaining fossil fuels with, you know, offsetting with clean energy and, and carbon sequestration, uh, you know, through our trees and, and things mm -hmm. here. Um, and so within that plan, there are several high priority and priority actions in different categories. And those primary categories are in buildings, because buildings are responsible for the bulk of our emissions here in town. It's about 60, 62 percent. Um, the next category is all about vehicles. Vehicles are, are on-road. Transportation is about 30, uh, 34 percent, I think, of our emissions. And then um, the remaining emissions are sort of a... a yeah, we're talking a, about 4 percent. Right. It, it right. It's, <laughs> you can you know, leave it's those alone for Wastewater <laughs> and uh, trash, and, but, it's, but it's a lot smaller. And those, mm -hmm. are, those are priorities. And the, the third category is, is energy overall, and that's sort of getting at this idea of um, our electric grid and cleaning it over time and making sure that Arlington can tap into those clean electricity uh, resources. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the overarching framework and that lays out the, the work that I have to do. And so um, a lot of what I'm focusing on is, you know, again, what, what Ken was focusing on, but it, we have this beautiful framework for it now that really gives us a roadmap and tells us what to prioritize and in what time frame. And so I'm going to be focusing on, on getting our buildings, uh, you know, getting them cleaner onto, off of fossil fuels and onto um, a clean electricity supply. And, and that's not something we can do alone entirely. I mean, definitely I can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, the staff can't do it alone. We need uh, resident support. And we have so many wonderful volunteers here in town who are already um, getting this up and running and have been for many years, like I said, laying the groundwork. Um, so it's, it's about our community, it's about our region being in partnership with, with other municipalities mm -hmm. who are also doing this and trying, you know, trying things out and, and we're all working together on that. And then the state as well, facilitating this by providing us with resources. I mean, the state has very similar goals. And so it's going to be, you know, it's not just about Arlington, it's about situating this work within the region and within the state as well, so. Right, and the state of course has its own net zero um, yep. emissions goal, of, which is very similar. That's and, right. Uh, so it's good to know that we're not working against uh, each <laughs> yeah. other in that way, but uh, but nonetheless, it, it there's only there's only a certain amount right that can be uh, supported or buttressed by state funding and state programs, et cetera. A lot of it, again, is just you know what you can uh, do here in town to establish the constituencies yeah. to m make all of this happen. Yeah. Um, so when you talk about buildings. Um, <clears throat> Um, there's, you know, b basically I can see how you would have some direct influence, um, you know, over municipal buildings um, and new buildings, perhaps, um, you know, I'm sure this, the high school is reflective of all of this uh, work, um, clearly. Um, but, but really the, the bulk of the issue is residences, isn't it? 
That's right. Um, and if you take residential emissions plus residential vehicle emissions, it's 80% of our total emissions. So that, that really tells you where we need to be putting our efforts. And yes, I, to a degree, I have more control over the municipal operations side of things, and that's very much part of my work. I mean, it's um, a big part of what Ken was doing and, and his predecessors um, was, was implementing our green communities program and, and um, getting that funding from the state, the, the Green Communities Program, which I know you've spoken a few times about on this program, mm -hmm. um, and implementing those projects, which are really focused on municipal building efficiency as well mm -hmm. as fleet um, electrification. Um, and, and so I will still be doing that, but there's, as you said, the larger piece of residential emissions, and we have to collaborate. Uh, we have to big, have a big campaign around electrification here in town. And I, and I should clarify, when I speak about electrification, I want to emphasize that that's important because we're still burning a lot of fossil fuels in our homes, right, to, to heat our homes. It's the primary, natural gas is the primary source of heating here in, in New England. And so the idea of electrification is that if we can switch over to electric sources of, of uh, heating in our homes and, and cooking and drying our clothes, then uh, as the electric grid gets cleaner over time, because the state, the state, as you said, and as I said, has, has similar plans to, to go green over time, as that grid gets cleaner, we'll be in a position to take advantage of that clean electricity. But when you start to think about the number of homes that we'd need to electrify in town, it's substantial. It's, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're talking, I think the, in our net zero action plan, it says we have to electrify 400 homes a year for the next, you know, 30 that, years. Yeah. That's a lot of homes. So we're going to be launching a big electrification campaign called Electrify Arlington here in town and getting volunteers out to support people with adopting um, air source heat pumps and and other uh, efficient technologies that can you know help us make that transition. So it'll be my uh, job with our volunteers to roll that out in the coming months. Yeah, and you know, um, I mentioned to you uh, a little earlier that you, you know, in, in our household here in Arlington, we you know, have been fortunate to be able to make these kinds of choices ourselves. And so we are you know, part of the uh, Community Choice Aggregation Plan, ACE. Um, you know, we're, we're at 100% and you know, trying to get our, our, or getting our electricity from renewable sources. And you know, we have a couple of electric cars in our house. Um, it's, it, it feels good. Uh, but we also understand that we're, you know, kind of fortunate to be able to do th this at this time. You have to help a lot of other people to see both the wisdom and the and the kind of the, the way to do this. Sure. What are some of the programs that you're, you know, that you're you're going to be st kind of steering towards them? Right, and I, I think in what you mentioned is this really important piece of of making it uh, an easy choice for people by incentivizing it by. Uh, demonstrating the financial benefits over time by demonstrating that it's more efficient, that it's more comfortable, um, that the air quality is better, making that case and, and really meeting people where they're at in, in that sense, you know, meeting their interests uh, to get them on this path, that's, that's what I'm going to be trying to do. Um, and fortunately, MassSave, which is the um, utility-sponsored energy efficiency program here in Massachusetts has some new rebates available for various technologies. So we'll be working to get the word out about those mm -hmm. technologies. We'll be training volunteers um, to speak to residents uh, about you know, how they can access those rebates and also speak to residents about their own experiences, uh, installing heat pumps. You know, I think people really respond well when they can go into a home and see, oh, it, you know, I'm really comfortable and it's cold outside, but this is still working and I'm still warm and um, and it's not noisy and, and all of or those. Or it's hot outside and this is still cool. Exactly. Cooling, and it's the been same a great right. benefit from our heat. Exactly. Pumps, I've got to say. And it's the same piece of technology that works both ways. Mm -hmm. um, so, really um, providing opportunities like open houses to, to demonstrate those benefits, uh, That's those are some of the programs I want to um, implement. And mm -hmm. then I think connecting also low and moderate income folks with those incentives that are available because we should be making you know those cost savings available to the folks who need it most and so that's a, a really important piece of the net zero action plan is is the equity component um, and that's definitely going to be part of our program programming so mm -hmm. and uh, you know I did I had mentioned and, and time is flying as we can see but I had mentioned that there are a number of different 
you know, areas that you, that you are responsible for or that there are different programs that you are uh, undertaking or getting going. Um, and, you know, a number of these you've alluded to already, um, you know, the ACE program and uh, green communities and the ener energy efficiency within buildings and within, you know, within homes, et cetera. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, one, one thing you had just mentioned earlier, Electrify Arlington. Mm -hmm. um, what is that part of what have you already kind of described that in terms of what you've been talking about or is that something slightly different? Yeah, I think I've, I've gotten at um, many pieces of it. It'll probably be united under a website um, and that's that's a high priority action in our net zero action plan is a few components of, of this campaign. And so it's it's mostly what I mentioned. It'll be getting the word out about existing resources and existing rebates. Um, it'll be connecting folks with coaches they can talk to, to to walk through the process of accessing those rebates. And it'll roll out, I think, similar to if you recall the heat, um, the heat smart program that mm -hmm. Ken had had run a couple years back. So a, a similar model where we're pointing folks to to contractors and rebates um, and and people to help them kind of move through that process over time. So when you mention, and it does seem like you're, you know, I've said how much you have on your own plate, but clearly, you know. Literally, you are one person, and however, however committed to this, however energetic you are, et cetera, you can do only so much. And you're going to really rely on, you've mentioned coaches, volunteers. I almost think uh, of my own role sometimes with our neighbors and others as an ambassador, yep. you know, to describe what it is like to, you know, have made these changes and what the ups and downs are, et cetera. Uh, how, how are you, you know, how, how is that going to come together as far as you can tell? How are you going to find those folks and, 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 and start to, to get, is this going to be like knocking on <laughs> doors or? Uh, that might be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, we, we fortunately have some really um, great organizations in town. I mean, I have, I have a couple of committees that I work with our Clean Energy Future Committee in particular, which really spearheaded the development of the Net Zero Action Plan. I mean, all of those yeah. folks are incredibly devoted and um, knowledgeable volunteers uh, with, with the town. And so I'll definitely be relying on their expertise. Um, we've partnered with various um, advocacy organizations in town um, who are already very embedded in the community. Um, and so I'll be tapping into those organizations and their connections. Uh, we already have a, a devoted group of volunteers for our ACE program, our Arlington Community Electricity Program. And so I'm already working with them and starting to have conversations. Um, Sustainable Arlington, which is another official um, I guess subcommittee of the Envision Arlington mm -hmm. group. Um, you know, I'm working with folks from that group. So it, there's a lot of existing infrastructure. And then I think there will be a component of getting the word out. We'll probably put out a, a call, sort of a solicitation for interest in, in being a volunteer or being a coach and then funnel folks through a training program um, once we, we get that kicked off. Wow. I mean, <laughs> it, it, you know, we are getting a sense of just how much work, literal, ground grunt work uh, is just going to be necessary on a, liter uh, again, literally day to day, week to week, month to month basis where you can't really take your eyes off the ball for, for very long. Um, but nice to hear and to know that you're tapping into existing infrastructure, that mm -hmm. there are already communities that are galvanized within our larger community of Arlington around these issues and they're and and you're going to be able to work with them yeah. and not have to kind of invent this yeah. from the whole cloth. Yeah, and as I said before, it's be, it's because of those individuals and those groups. Many many of those folks have lived here for decades. They really laid the groundwork for all of this. So we I wouldn't I actually wouldn't be here if, if not for them. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you about and I know we're going to end up missing out on talking uh, about some of this stuff. And I really uh, genuinely want to have you back for um, uh, 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 the ability or for us to be able to, you know, kind of basically get into the weeds on all of this um, to a greater degree than we can in this particular half hour. But let me ask you about one thing um, that I know is also part of this, uh, this part of your full plate. And that is, um, 
a lot of uh, a lot of what you are confronting reminds me of um, the situation for Jillian Harvey, our DEI director here in town, where she has just a whole lot of stuff that she's trying to put together uh, around the establishment of uh, good practice, great practices um, for diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm sure that you are both cognizant of you've already mentioned, you know, wanting to get to low and moderate income people as well as uh, as those of us who are more privileged um, uh, to to be able to get incentives, information, et cetera. Um, I also would imagine that there's a, a piece that is just around social racial equity that needs to be part of this effort. Um, can you just speak to you know to, to that a little bit? Sure. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you mentioned Jill. I've I've spoken with her, and I know we'll be collaborating uh, closely in the future. And I think the work she's doing in town is tremendous. Um, so I, I don't think you can really separate those issues from from the climate crisis and the way that it's playing out. And Arlington isn't an exception. I mean, overall, it is a more affluent community, but. I mean, if you look at the statistics, we still have a significant portion of the town that are low and moderate income mm -hmm. and, and folks of color. And so I'll, I'll be focusing on, in our implementation of our programs, how do we reach people who have been left out of the process historically? And so one of the projects I'm excited about will be a collaboration with uh, USDN, the Urban Sustainability Directors Network, um, and it's called the Nexus, and we'll be thinking through how to integrate racial equity into our climate work, into a specific climate project here in town. And that's going to be over time working with community members, paying some of those community members through a grant um, that's already been acquired, and um, not by the town, but by a, a partner. Um, and, and really thinking through, okay, we have all these values and I think it's nice to, to talk about these things and, and we use a lot of the buzzwords now, mm -hmm. but what does that look like when, when we start to implement projects? How do we actually build trust? How do we um, implement things in an equitable way? Make sure that people who are, you know, for example, taking advantage of the incentives are actually people who need the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. I think that just, just thinking through logistically what that's going to take and, and what that process will look like, you know, with a specific project and then how do, how do we expand that um, for our other climate work here in town is, is something I'm really excited about. Right, and then, and then taking all that and then actually putting it into practice and, yeah. and you know, starting that process, as you Absolutely. said. Yeah, um, yeah I, you know, I had mentioned I would want to get uh, into the weeds with you a little bit more on a future conversation. And really that, that, that will be, you know, I understand these are early days for that, for the nexus and for that project in general, but uh, we really want to uh, kind of get a sense of just how it is that you will put that into practice. Um, so that and other things we'll have to, to, to shelve for the moment, but um, I, I hope and I, I think that our audience would have gotten a pretty good sense of just how important um, and comprehensive the work is that you're doing. Um, and so thank you, first of all, for taking it on. Um, we appreciate it. We hope that you and your youthful energy will, con <laughs> you know, will be up for it. Um, but, uh, you know, I look forward to charting your progress and to kind of, again, sharing this desk and this conversation space with you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I have been speaking, of course, with Talia Fox, who is our sustainability manager here in town. And um, we expect to talk to her more in the future. Uh, thanks again to Talia for her time today and to you as well. I'm James Milan. This is Talk of the Town. We'll see you next time.